meat in the freezer. So happy I'm on lunch. It's so stupid. I think it might work. Chaos? Like every hunting season. Seems like it's not going anywhere, but it also seems like it could go somewhere. He lost his favorite bag, I swear. I would not. I'm actually pretty good directionally. Hopefully the, the mixer doesn't start on fire like that one time. Yeah, it's done some pretty neat things. <laughs> <laughs> we've we've dealt with like Every tech issue you could possibly imagine. With each separate piece. I say I have a, I have a fire extinguisher in my squad. I just gotta, <laughs> just gotta run back. To it. <clears throat> Here we go. This is the OKS Hunter Podcast. Never pass on shooter bucks, because that's just me in the freezer. It's your tag. You hunt how you want. This is OKS Hunter. Welcome to the OK Center Podcast. I haven't been down here in forever. It's good to be back. I have a lot of goodies for you, actually. I saw some boxes upstairs. You got boxes, you got shirts, uh, maybe a hat. I don't know. Take take your pick, buddy. Cool. It's a smorgasbord for you. How you doing? Doing good. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. That's tuning in, whether you're in the car, on a walk, in the shower. I don't know where people listen to this. They don't <laughs> tell me. Maybe I, they shouldn't. I don't want to get too Probably weird. too much information. But we're presented by Nosler. Uh, Nozzle and Ammunition, they're going to be on the show uh, on May 7th, whatever the Tuesday is, right by Cinco de Mayo. So I'm really mostly looking forward to buying a sipping tequila. I'll bring uh, chips and salsa. Some yeah, guac. honestly, that's a good idea. There's pizza upstairs. I don't know if you had pizza on the way down or not. I didn't. Holly tried to give me some. She was very gracious, but I just ate before I came. Yeah. I guess they <laughs> You're <do>. hungry. <laughs> I, I, I did the same. I had rookie mistake on my party. Oh, before Holly comment. offered it to you. Yeah. 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 That's okay. You know, I'd rather be overprepared than underprepared, which isn't normally like me. But my when my wife is present, that's you get a better version of me. So <laughs> that's how that works. Um, in any event, uh, yeah. So other partners, Latitude, they have a sale on the uh, Rebel platform that's going to be happening here. So stay tuned for that. They also have some new stuff coming out for the Carbon. Oh, Jesus. The Carbon Series Speed Sticks. Nailed it. I think I got well it done. Right. And I saw that, uh, I know we've talked about potentially having him on, but uh, Curtis Zabel, he does a bunch of film work. He's a hunting guy from Wisconsin, really well established. Wait. He did all their video work for their new clips. Did you see that? It's oh, really, really cool. All right. I'll put some viewers um, out there. Yeah, come on. Come on. You can come on the show. Um, Spartan Forge, you know, I, I ping Bill. He must be in the trenches working his typical 80 hours per week. So I, I know that means there's a lot to come there. So just stay frosty, as it were. And then Rack Hub behind you uh, on the wall there, you can see that uh, antler on display. Um, you know, shed seasons pretty much come to a close. It's getting um, green. If you're starting to get mounts back and things like that, like I think like some connectivity things. It keeps saying I've lost connection, but our Wi-Fi is good. So it's still everyone's, everyone's here. Brad is waiting uh, behind scenes. So we do have some guests with us tonight, one virtual, one in studio. We have um, Eric Anderson and Brad Bradley Wilson with uh, the Wisconsin dnr you guys are conservation wardens yeah and uh i'm not gonna lie when the squad pulled up i was like huh that did make me a little nervous <laughs> and then you <laughs> came on your uniform like yep definitely making me nervous um i forgot that uh, who the guest was tonight and then i pulled up i was like shit eric's in trouble i should probably <laughs> just go go right by um so no we're, we're happy to have you guys on the on the podcast tonight yeah welcome this thanks is, for coming yeah, thanks for having us. Um, yeah, we're really excited to to be here. Um, yeah, thanks for welcoming us uh, into your house, and uh, yeah, excited to talk with you about uh, kind of what we do. Yeah, I'm. I don't know who from the DNR had reached out. I forget. Uh, I don't know if it was one of you guys or someone else getting you guys to do these things. You're like, what did you sign me up for? Kind of thing. <laughs> um, but I loved the idea when when you guys had reached out. I was immediately like, "This would be a great topic. I would love to do that." And I apologize for any delay on my behalf because this is a side thing for me, so it's really hard to find time to respond to emails. Um, that being said, kind of uh, yeah, take a second to introduce yourselves if you don't mind, and uh, what your role is and how long you've been with the DNR. Um, Bradley, if you want to go first, since you're virtual, you're be our guest over there, and then we'll have Eric go next on this side. 
Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Brad Wilson. Um, I've been a Wisconsin Conservation Warden um, going on seven years now. Um, I'm located in Walworth County, so right on the southern border there, right with Illinois. You said was it seven years? Yes. That's longer than I've done anything. <laughs> That's great. And you're you said you're in a barracks right now. Like what else are you up to then? Because you're not just so, Yeah, I can uh, kind of go over. Uh I'm actually currently in the reserves uh for the US Coast Guard and I actually got called up and um I'm doing my active duty training right now and I'm located here in this wonderful uh, barracks. So. <laughs> You went, did you just get called up? Was that a recent uh, thing? So, yep, I got um, called up. Um, it was last week, Wednesday. Um, got called up, got orders, and I had to be um, where I needed to be in uh, last Wednesday. So I've been here, and I'll be here for a little bit. So Yeah. Well, thank you for your service. That's awesome. Uh, Eric, how about you? How long have you been doing what you're doing? Yeah, so I am going on three and a half years. So I guess uh, compared to Brad and some of our other staff, I'm I'm still relatively fresh into the the warm profession, um, but you know, very much enjoying uh, this opportunity with the DNR and uh, all the different cool stuff that I get to do as being a warden. Um, I work out of Milwaukee County, which is um, you know, probably a, a unique station for a, uh, for a game warden to be working in Milwaukee County. Yeah, um, but with, uh, you know, the, the big city that we have there, um, we certainly have uh, a lot of great resources when it comes to fishing, um, and, uh, different recreational vehicle stuff with boats and, and everything along those lines. And, uh, surprisingly there are a few places where you can still hunt. Um, so, uh, you get into still uh, a little bit of everything just with a little bit more of an urban feel. Sure. So it's just a different weight of like, we all think of like, I don't know, conservation wardens as being in the woods, but here you've got a giant Harbor to deal with. Yeah, so, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's just a, it's, your work is allocated a little bit differently yeah. than what most people probably think. Yeah. Not, not uncommon for me to have, uh, yeah, skyscrapers in the background, <laughs> But uh, it doesn't mean that uh, the resources aren't still there to protect. Um, you know, I was talking to some people recently that uh, traveled in from, you know, 10 plus hours away to try and see if they could still catch a brown trout in the harbor. And, uh, yeah, we have some great resources there to, uh, to ensure they're are there for the future. Can you tell me about some of these uh, hunting spots in Milwaukee? <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have a, a sneaky little spot in Franklin. There's a, there's a little... Um, piece of chunk of dnr land um that's part of the big mosquito uh wildlife oh. area okay my dad probably knows about that yeah <laughs> he knows all the sneaky spots and he's in mosquito so i'm willing to bet and if he doesn't your dad's going listen, damn it eric like, oh, check him off yeah yeah exactly <laughs> i don't know no, no. today's world there's not too many secrets especially no, when it comes to with gis mapping and yeah whatnot. i mean and just it's tough. <laughs> it's tough yeah yeah it's no. easy uh, it's, it's an area where the dnr has done a lot of good work too with putting out our different public land access maps and voluntary public access stuff for especially like turkey season yeah. and um uh, yeah you know definitely if people haven't gone and explored on those different mapping resources jump on the dnr website and see what you can find well I'll let either one of you answer this first question but like how would you describe what your role is or I guess if we're calling this a day in the life, I think we could start with what is your role? How do you, how would you define that for each of you, given that you're in different stations? And then what is a day in the life kind of like, um, if we want to go into that kind of as a next segue? Um, I'll, I'll let Brad tackle, tackle his role. Yeah. So I have a, a lot of different roles. Um, within the DNR. Um, obviously right now me and Eric are on the recruitment committee. Um, one of those jobs is trying to recruit uh, future wardens for uh, the wonderful service that we work for. Um, promoting, uh, promoting the service, um, basically going over uh, what we do, um, basically the safe use of our natural resources um, uh, and the education to the public when it comes to hunting and fishing, assisting uh, people within uh, hunter education and boating education and all of the educational cl uh, classes and assisting um, our partners within the DNR um, when it comes to water regs or environmental cases and stuff like that. So 
<clears throat> yeah, kind of like Brad said, um, as conservation wardens, um, you know, we are the law enforcement branch or arm of the Department of Natural Resources. Um, so we have uh, statewide law enforcement authority um, over DNR regulated activities. So, you know, what are DNR regulated activities? Um, hunting, fishing, trapping, recreational vehicles, so boating, ATVs, snowmobiles, uh, you know, off highway motorcycles, um, and then environmental um, concerns also. So like Brad talked about with, you know, different things when it comes to like water regulations or um, big spills or another area where we might get involved or, um, you know, different, you know, littering or, or hazardous waste and things. So um, the environmental stuff gets pretty broad and, and complex. Um, and then uh, we also have a real specific focus on um, DNR uh, lands or Wisconsin state lands. So making sure um, that people at, are visiting our state parks state forests, um, you know, wildlife management areas, different things along those lines, um, making sure that people are following all the, the normal rules and regulations. Um, we have full police authority uh, at our state parks and different state properties. So, um, you know, similar to, you know, a, a sheriff in Waukesha County, we have the ability to enforce all, all laws on those state properties. That's a lot to know. It's like, it's like some laws and then some. <laughs> It covers such a wide spectrum, like the UTV, ATV being legalized on roadways, which was a while ago now, but I know that's really changed. Like in yeah. a lot of different townships have it legalized. And then you have trails in the northern part of the state. And it's like, that's a whole other can of worms outside of what you were already dealing with that now registrations and following speed limits. Yep. And that, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, I'd say that's, um, you know, one of the things where I think when you're when you're new to it, um, it is a lot that that's coming at you. So I think the analogy that we commonly hear is you're drinking out of a fire hose, um, <laughs> trying to to learn not only how to, you know, do all the different traditional law enforcement things, um, but also how to, you know, regulate those um, specific DNR activities. So, you know, there can be, you know, quite a bit thrown at you, but we have a, a really good training program that does a great job at preparing us for anything that we may encounter. But yeah, you know, a little bit more unique than, you know, a state trooper that, you know, may focus more specifically on, you know, the, the, the highways and making sure that, you know, people are behaving there or, you know, compared to a municipal cop that may have, you know, a specific town or, mm -hmm. you know, area where they're enforcing those laws. Yeah. We can kind of, be anywhere um, and uh, get involved in a lot of different things. Um, but I think that also is part of what keeps it fresh. Not always uh, interesting. I'm yeah, sure. there, there's always something new and, and different. And there's a little bit of a seasonality to it, too. Sure. Oh, yeah. Um, so, you know, in, in fall, you know, when hunting seasons are kind of going on, you know, that's, you know, becomes a big primary focus for us. You know, in winter, um, when we have snow or when we have ice, uh, you know, <laughs> Not much I, this year, but, yeah, yeah, ice fishing, snowmobiling, <laughs> things along those lines. Um, summer, you know, those boats, uh, ATVs, UTVs, um, people out recreating, camping at our state properties. Um, those are things that really, you know, keep us busy. So, you know, the, the second that you, you kind of um, start to, to get you know, sick of doing boating enforcement, you get to transition over to, <laughs> to hunting and, yeah. and then stuff like that. So <laughs> sure. it, it, it always keeps it fresh for you. Yeah. Um, have you like, so you talk about like the UTVs or the side-by-sides, whatever they're called. Um, the e-bikes have been becoming really popular and there's the regulations around, you can clear this up because I don't actually know what I'm talking about <laughs> around. Like I, I, they're really aimed at people that have private property. Like, can I use them on a bike trail? Can I use them to get out on public land in some way, shape or form? Like, where does that fall? Is it a gray area because it's motorized, but it's electric. Is there, you know? Yeah, um, I don't know, Brad, you got any insight on on that one? Uh, the the e bike does stuff does get a little bit uh, complicated um, when it comes to to those those different usages for the state properties that I have specifically in Milwaukee County. I don't really deal with it with hunters using them, um, but you know if there's areas where you know you're not supposed to be motorized, um, I want to see people pedaling. 
like gated paths and stuff, no motorized vehicles. Yeah, yeah. I want to, you know, not, I have no issue with the e-bike being engaged, but I, I like to see people <laughs> pedaling and, and not using it strictly as a, as a, as a motorbike. Sure. That's a good point. I think in a lot of those, they tend to be like, you kind of have to pedal to engage. I've never been on bit. one. I, don't know. I feel I like I was on one a long time ago, but they've probably come a long way since their inception. Oh, and they make all different kinds. Like, I see people all the time in town. Like, yeah. You know, like, little older lady or a guy going on a ride, and they got, like, the cruiser-style ones, and they're just yeah. bopping around, which is pretty cool. Versus, like, all the hunting <laughs> ones are, like, the big fat tires and all that stuff, which even just a mountain bike with fat tires might be navigatable to some degree. I don't really know. No. But I know some hunters are always looking for the path of least resistance or how can I get to this spot? Because you're not even the path of least resistance, but sometimes it's, it's a matter of like access or yeah, I need to get somewhere that's far away or I can only park here. So I don't want to walk yeah. miles down the road. And I'd say main thing is, you know, if you're accessing your, if you're going to be on a property that has like specific trails, um, know what those trails can be used for. So if it's, you know, specifically for hiking or if it's, you know, specifically for cross country skiing at this point in time of the year, um, make sure you're following that guidance on those trails. And if they want you to stay specifically on a trail, um, stay on the trail so that you're not doing further damage to any of the, the natural areas, you know, creating your own trails. We lost Brad. I don't know. He might have his connection was showing <laughs> degraded a little bit. It was like a yellow and the bars are showing weak signal you get a seven out of ten yeah which i think there's probably a certain threshold where it doesn't go well okay gotcha and i'm because he's in the barracks would be my lucky guess as to maybe it's a concrete building with some layers above him um you would think in 2024 but <laughs> you never know yeah bandwidth. so he's he popped right back on we'll see if uh if it's any better can you hear me now we got you now showing uh stronger green bars your connection's showing a 10 out of 10 this time it was a seven out of 10 before so Perfect. Hopefully you just keep going uh, up in our book. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Sorry for the complication. Not many people say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of the comments that are coming through on this, so it took e-bikes to get people to start commenting. I think people are a little nervous with you guys on. So there's like, usually there's like 20 comments I got of the gate. What's up, fellas? And it's like, it's been, I'm like, is it working? Are we live? Like, I see people are watching, but there's nothing. And finally, someone said, so I can just add pedals to my dirt bike, eh? <laughs> like, no. No, don't do that. Well, actually, I'd like to see you try. I don't know how that's going to work out for you, but um, if it's your property, go for it. <laughs> I'd like to see it. Please make a video, send it to us, tag us. Yeah, I'm going to hunt ducks on my Segway and, and add pedals like hand pedals. Speaking so. of Segways, my, oh, son, my okay. son got some money from Grandpa and Grandma for his birthday, and I did not want to give him those little hoverboard things because yeah. I don't want him to take off. He's seven. And he like, don't go far. It means yeah. like nothing. <laughs> but uh, he convinced mom, if I use my money, can I get one of these things? My wife and I both stepped on it, fell off immediately. <laughs> He's like doing 360s five minutes in. So I'm going to borrow that for hunting, maybe. <laughs> Find where it's legal. <laughs> that is the challenge. So then like you guys are, are aids in like helping navigate some of these rules and regulations. And um, I've actually like there's been a number of times where I'm like, oh, I need to I should call the D call the DNR. When I call the DNR, I'm getting like a call center typically. How there's also like um I, I don't know what they're called, guys, but if there's like sometimes there's a designated person to talk to for a certain region. What is that called? Because not a warden, it's like uh so yeah, there's there's different ways to contact the DNR. Um we have a DNR calls like customer service line mm -hmm. that people can call into and that's where i would normally encourage people to start if they have a, a general question and i mean even before that i would i think it's it's surprising the amount of information that is available on the dnr's website yeah so i think i would before even necessarily calling somebody if um you feel relatively comfortable using a computer um you know type whatever you're looking for into the search bar first and see see what pops up because that's often the quickest way to start getting um information that's relevant to your question but if you know if you need something further than that i would start with our customer service center and our customer service reps are overall uh great at being able to 
you know, talk with people to try and, you know, understand what is the question. Um, and uh, oftentimes if it does come to something that is regulatory um, and, you know, if they don't know the answer offhand, um, then they'll try and get in touch or get that individual in touch with um, somebody that should know more. So if it's, yeah, understanding the nuance of a certain fish and game law, um, then they would probably try and get a hold of whoever is that local warden um, or, you know, if it's something that is, um, yeah, regulatory to a specific department like waterway or something, they'd probably get in touch with somebody in that department. Okay. What are, uh, Brad, you've been at it a little bit longer than Eric. What are some of the, like, um, I don't know, some of the myths around wardens, like what, you know, I'll say this, like, unfortunately the DNR like gets beat up a lot, like on social media. The memes and the commentary and the dog piling. And I, I've just never been that type. It doesn't, <clears throat> first of all, I'm not that type, anyways. It speaks to the brand that we have. However, um, I don't have, like, you're just human beings doing your job. You're doing the best you can with the information at hand. And I, I don't think, and it's a lot of it's, it's, you're a public entity funded by tax dollars. So when we go to hearings and things of that nature, and like we can voice our opinion, you guys, you do listen, not you guys, but the DNR. <laughs> Um, so Brad, I guess the, the question is, cause I always take like 10 minutes to ask a question. There's usually 10 of them in there is what are some of the myths that maybe you could bust around? No, wardens won't do this or we, we don't do that. Or yes, we do do this. Um, maybe you have some anecdotes. I think the biggest thing is people are, like you said, people are, um, scared of us when we come up, you yourself said it at the beginning when, when, uh, uh, Eric pulled up, you got nervous. Um, I think, I think that's the biggest thing that, um, I try to get a hold of people to, to educate them is that one, uh, unlike regular police, that if they're showing up to your house, you've probably done something wrong. If we pull up to you on a boat, nine times out of 10, we're just checking compliance just to verify that you're in compliance with all laws. So, um, 99% of the people we deal with are good people. So I just want to get the notion that we're not out there just to give tickets. Um, one of our biggest things for us is education. Um, we want people to enjoy the outdoors um, just as much as I love the outdoors. Uh, so that's one of the biggest uh, things out there, rumors out there that, oh, we're only out there just to give tickets and, and ruin people's days. But we're not. Will tickets be given? Tickets will be given if, if they need to be given. But um, my biggest thing is safety and education of, of the resources and the outdoors so people can use it uh, wisely. And it's good to be educated. Like, I think Greg, if you were here, he was out on the big lake, salmon fishing on Lake Michigan. Uh, I don't know if he's in Milwaukee Harbor or like McKinley or a different one. Uh, and yeah, some wardens stopped. It, they came up to his boat. I don't know if it's wardens or the coast guard he did some posts on okay's fisher instagram account if he were here he would speak to it correctly and tell me to shut my mouth and <laughs> say, no eric it was the whatever and it was a big vessel and i think they, it might have been the coast guard i think it was the coast guard because it looked pretty what color was the boat we weren't there we'd have I don't to go know. find the po it's on oh. their their account but it was one of these where like Everything was good except for like one thing. One of the fire extinguishers was like expired. And he's like, oh, I didn't, I wouldn't have realized that. Thanks for telling me. And they didn't give any ticket. It was just more like, you need to go deal with that. And otherwise, good job. Stay safe. And that to me seems like a great experience, you know? And if that were the DNR or a warden, like, I think that's a fine experience, you know? Um, and yeah, the nervousness comes from just being around official things like sometimes it's so official like we're, <laughs> we're pretty casual here you know we're drinking bourbon and, and it's like it's interesting that i mean of course you guys are just i always like to say like you're just people too you know um we were chatting before we came down here yeah. eric and eric uh of stairs and you know you talked about like ha having a communication degree might be a great uh conduit into joining you know the the dnr uh, becoming a warden so i don't know if you want to <clears> touch on you mentioned uh bradley like the recruitment effort of things for you two uh, how does one join the, how do you become a warden? Like, what is that path or that journey? Um, yeah. So uh, currently we are uh, in our open hiring process. 
uh, for for wardens, um, and that uh, started up, I believe, at the uh, beginning of the month and runs through Tuesday, May seventh. And um, you know, the the qualifications aren't anything crazy to be able to apply. Um, you know, at the time of hire, you have to be 21 years of age. Um, you can't have a, a felony conviction or a domestic conviction. Um, you have to get 60 college credits by the time uh, you're within five years of uh, employment as a warden. Um, there's, I think, some other things regarding uh, your driving record. So just so you can show that you have the ability to be able to operate a state vehicle. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it's not really anything crazy regarding the, the real black and white, um, qualifications. Um, I think in kind of a, a broader, you know, spectrum, uh, you know, we're looking for, for good people. Yeah. Um, you know, you know, uh, we don't necessarily, um, yeah, need to, to hire somebody that's, you know, overly specific into to one thing. I think, you know, the main thing that we want to see is, um, yeah, that you're a good person and that, um, you know, if we provide you the right environment uh, for training, um, that you are going to learn from that and progress and, um, you know, learn how to how to become, you know, a, a good warden uh, from that. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of the basics that we're looking for. <clears throat> We do have a caller. Uh, I think he's a he's a regular. I think he's called in the show three times. We he follows us on social. It's David Nowakowski. He said he was calling to talk to the wardens. So, David, uh, you're live on the show. Do you got some questions for the fellas here? Hey, Eric. Um, yeah. Um, first, I'd like to uh, thank both Eric and Brad for wearing the uniform of the conservation officers and you know serving the people of Wisconsin and uh Brad for you know being a in the national was it the Navy Reserves serving his country. I you know want to thank him very much for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um yeah uh Brad you said uh like the on the myths, you know, when you guys show up the people get nervous. I always enjoy uh like when the Illinois Conservation Police officers show up when most of the time it's been when I've been fishing and um, we'd sit there and mo most of the times the, it'll, the encounter will turn into like a 10 minute conversation about how things are going, you know, what I'm fishing for, if I'm getting anything and uh, topics on even like, you know, the conditions and everything else. And so, yeah, I always enjoy, you know, in encounters with our conservation officers. Yeah, I echo that, David. I, yeah. I do as well. They have good tips. Thank you. And and they they they're in the woods all the time. It's kind of like who's been dragging deer out of here? <laughs> what have you seen? <laughs> you right. Tell you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Driving around all those public spots, they know where a few big bucks yeah, are yeah, hiding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Any 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 specific questions or anything like that, David? Or just calling this? Yeah. Um. For uh, well, both Brad and Eric, what is the one thing that you know, you want why you wanted to get into be a conservation officer. What is that one thing? Good question. I guess I can go first if you want, Eric. Yeah, go for it, Brad. So, um, yeah, it the passion of the outdoors has always been one of my biggest passions. Um, I grew up fishing Geneva Lake, and um, me and my dad always were catching fish. And um, one day a warden pulled up and like you said, we talked for 10 minutes and ever since that moment, I've always wanted to do this job. Um, some of, sometime it has fallen off the back burner and then, um, uh, being in the military, working with some other, uh, game and fish agencies or, um, DNR agencies really lit the fire under me to really go for it because, um, I have kids now that just love the outdoors. My daughter loves fishing. My son, uh, he loves turkey hunting. So I just want to make sure that uh, for future. Just, that's the biggest reason why I, I do this job. <clears throat> Good luck following that one. That yeah, was I, 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 you, you know, that was, uh, uh, that, that, that was very good from Brad. I I think he probably rehearsed that. But um, 
I would say, you know, that answer is probably somewhat universal with a lot of us that are wardens where, you know, it may not, we may not all engage, engage in every single activity that wardens recreate or regulate, but um, a lot of us uh, are passionate about a lot of those different activities. So for me specifically, um, very avid hunter, fisher, and um, I just find it to be extraordinarily rewarding um, to turn something that I'm very passionate about uh, into a career. And, you know, it's uh, something where, you know, it's it's still really cool where um, I'm getting paid to to wake up early, um, to go drive around on opening morning of gun deer season, uh, to, you know, see the sunrise, listen to the gunshots yeah. and uh, still get to, to be involved and engaged and have a role that, you know, I may not be the one that's out there harvesting at that exact moment, but uh, I have the ability to to be out there still participating ensuring people are having, you know, a safe, fun time while following, you know, all of our, our rules and regulations. So I think that's just really enjoyable. I think that that's got to be one of the, I don't, don't want to speak for you, but that seems like it would be, I mean, we've all been in the woods when a friend or a buddy, you know, harvest something and you get to be a part, maybe the tail end of that. But I bet you, you get to have a lot of great encounters with people who maybe had like yeah. great experiences fishing or hunting bag their first this or that and like you kind of get to be a part of a lot of those different scenarios and be there as a bystander or a helping hand to make sure everything from there on goes well yeah yeah no it's not uncommon for yeah. me to play a role as a net man or uh <laughs> to uh well, start yeah. uh, taking it's some actually, photos it's funny you mentioned that there was a uh there was a first time hunter uh, last, uh, excuse me, two years ago using public land in Walworth County, harvested a deer and uh, um, I got to help him track it. So That's it really was a, uh, it was a rewarding just wow. uh, being there by his side and watching his reaction. I mean, granted it was a doe, but everybody needs meat, right? So um, it was really, uh, really rewarding to help him just kind of go over some tips and tricks of what to do if you do lose blood look for snap sticks um yada 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 so it was it was it was really rewarding to do that and what better way to recruit people than to leave a positive positive spirit experience behind with what you did and i kind of was Correct. thinking about that before when you guys were talking about recruitment and like what it takes to be an officer you got to know a lot of technical information about a lot of different things but how much of it would you say is just about your interactions with people and the communication aspect like me being a teacher I know some teachers who are amazing at their their subject. They're passionate about it, but the people part, maybe they lack a little bit. So it's harder to translate to people to communicate with like the students. But I know people who know very little, I would say about like the fine tuna, but they're great teachers because of how they interact and they just make it a pleasant place to be. So do you see that at all in your profession that like the communication aspect is almost as important? Yeah, I, I would yes. say the communication is um, yeah essential for for wardens, um, you know, and you know a lot of other law enforcement officers to to be you know successful in their job, um, you know. All while oftentimes we're able to encounter people while they're out recreating, having fun, um, you know, there still is uh, potential for you to encounter people that are, um, you know, in a stressful situation, having a bad day, you know. You know, maybe something bad happened involved in a, you know, recreational vehicle accident or something. And, um, you know, it, it's important to be able to, you know, talk with them, calm them down, you know, kind of get a grasp on the situation and uh, be able to, you know, kind of diffuse tensions uh, and uh, go from there. So, yeah, having that communication skill um, is, is really tremendous. David, thanks for the call. Yep. Uh Y'all have a great night, and uh, Brad and Eric, y'all be safe out there when you're out patrolling. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Good night. Good night, David. Keep posting all those great fishing pictures, yeah, buddy. He's been fishing a ton lately. Yeah. I'm really jealous of <laughs> all the fishing he's doing. Maybe not jealous. I'm happy for him. <laughs> but he's, yeah, he's been slaying the, the largemouth. Um, one, of the, one of the questions or comments that came through, uh, I'll toss it up on the screen from a friend of ours, Ryan uh, Longren, he is, have you guys talked about hunter harassment and to answer his question, we haven't yet, but that is something where like hunters can get harassed by others. You, know, you see the viral 
videos on YouTube or TikTok or Instagram of like someone fishing too close to a pier and, you know, some angry woman comes out and says, I'm going to call the police and the wardens and you can't fish here. And he's like, well, it's a, it's a public waterway. I can. You're uncomfortable. I'll keep going on. But that's where the fish are. Um, and so that's one example. Obviously, there's others. I think there's a viral video. Not that they're all having viral videos, but these are just potentially good ones to like center around it from a conversation standpoint. Um, there is some goose hunters and a guy came up and was like, you're you're on my property. And like, well, we're not on your property. And the guy proceeded to just self escalate and get really, really upset. Um, I mean, people are like, you know, in some cases are pulling guns. It can get pretty dicey out there uh, when you're dealing with like land ownership and trespassing. Um, those are just some of the conduits that might lead into like a hunter being harassed by someone that doesn't hunt. I, I had an encounter and I'll get to letting you guys talk um, two years ago. when We were filming our, our, our show um, and I was putting a canoe in. Uh, of course, I did all my homework, right? I can put in here. This is public. It just opened up. Yada, yada, yada. I was really excited about it. And a, a gal walking by was like, or you can't hunt here. What? I know I can't hunt here. I'm going to hunt down there. So I'm putting my canoe in the river. <laughs> She's like, are you sure? I'm like, I'm, yeah, I'm positive. I've done my homework. And uh, she was like, what are you going to do? Just go out there and drink beer and maim animals. I'm like, absolutely not. You know, it's not the plan. Uh, it's not what we do. And I actually was able to talk with her for like, uh, unfortunately too long because I needed to get out to my spot. <laughs> but I think I talked to her for like 15 minutes and at the end of the conversation, she's like, I'm glad I met you. You changed my purview on hunters and they're not all beer drinking, you know, injuring animals. I'm like, I'm not sure where that thought came from for you or how you got introduced to that. But it's folks like that that might not understand what we do outdoors that might harass a hunter. And then that's where I don't know how many calls you guys with that. How many calls you guys get with that kind of stuff. But I'd be interested to hear any stories you have. 15 minutes, probably the best time you could spend. You know what I mean? Like you just yeah, turn someone's true. perception around, which is pretty impressive. Sorry. Yeah, it felt a little like uh, heated out of the gate. She was definitely, you know, when you're getting in a confrontation, you can tell you're getting a, a surge of adrenaline. Something she was obviously passionate about. She too, was right? getting she was protecting. Very, yes. She was... Yeah. It's a good way to put it. Very mother mother bear over her, her nature. I see the deer. We love the deer. I'm like, I love the deer too. My daughter loves to eat them. <laughs> Brad, you got any examples you want to provide? Um, actually down by me, the, the biggest thing with, when it comes to hunter harassment is really just, um, what I like to tell people is don't make the, uh, don't make the argument even more heated. Um, go ahead and try to walk away from the situation. Um, the biggest thing is, um, if you did catch them on film doing something that, that just helps us with the, the investigation, because ultimately us as the wardens, we have to prove intent. Were they intentionally out there disrupting your hunting or your fishing? Is that why they were out there? So, um, that's the biggest thing for us when it comes to those investigations is trying to figure out the intent of that person. So, um, the biggest thing that we as wardens don't want is, uh, any engagement, um, fighting, um, just walk away from the situation. Um, and like you stated, you, that is another thing. If you can try to uh, calm the situation down, calm the situation down and, and, and talk to them and you may end up, um, uh, changing somebody's views on, on hunting. <clears throat> yeah, I, I deal with it, not necessarily more being, on the hunting suburb, side it's, it's, it's a little bit different in an urban area you probably have more non-hunting folks then. yeah and and i would say i deal that maybe a little bit more on um some of our rivers where um you know during a fall salmon run or something along those lines we can get a lot of users that are out there um trying to target one specific hole or something along those lines um and there can be some user conflict of you know hey i'm here this is my spot and you know somebody's trying to cast over them or, or whatever it is um yeah i i similar to, to what brad said you know we don't want people to escalate those situations um you know we have a, a role to play as wardens and um we don't you know we, we we enjoy when people are able to to you know safely you know document whatever's going on for us that aids us in our investigation so just but, wear, wear a gopro <laughs> yeah but but at the same time we don't want people yet yeah, to to further escalate it by 
you know, trying to argue that point, you know, give us a call, Mm -hmm. let us know what's going on. Um, It seems like a vast majority of these situations, um, contact between both parties, you know, us as wardens being able to talk to people and. Sorry about that. That's uh... (laughs) a. A ringtone rookie move there on my part i don't know how to make that stop <laughs> first time but yeah i guess us as wardens being able to talk to the hunter and understand what what happened from their side of the things you know potentially being able to also talk to that other landowner or, or other party and be able to understand their side of the things um you know normally we're able to come to some agreeable um resolution um out of out of understanding yeah I guess that would be a case by case scenario, but man, I think sometimes one of the easiest la- ways to escalate a situation or to really piss somebody off who's already elevated would be to take out your phone and start filming them, right? Like, I get how that aids in the investigation, <laughs> yes. but like that's, that's how these YouTube that's videos go viral because yeah. they like want to get somebody riled up, watch. So, like, you that, that may not off. be always in your best interest. You got to watch out for yourself. And if that's not going to be the real good call, it's a really great parenting tactic. <laughs> My kids yeah. having a temper tantrum. I'm like, watch this. You're going to show this to your teacher. Oh, they don't like that. And they're like, they stop. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know, Derek. Like, it, maybe, maybe. Right, this season, we're going to do <laughs> you videotape everybody. <laughs> I'll videotape nobody. And then we just happened to be, and, and I think Jace is out when that gal was around. So, he didn't get it on camera. Probably for the best. Um, I mean, he could have because we could have just blurred out the face, but there's uh, rules around like recording and things like that. So, um, unfortunately, it wasn't. And we ran to another hunter on public and we didn't film that either, but that was another great positive interaction where I think we made friends. And uh, I, we're all out there trying to experience something similar. Not the exact same thing because we all have our own way of coming to the world and seeing it. But, you know, if we kind of can acknowledge that we're sharing a resource. And that's a that in and of itself is a positive thing. I understand if someone's casting over someone's line, it's a dick move, and that could frustrate someone. And I know when like the walleyes are running, those boats get awfully close. It's like a war zone out there. If the wrong people come in contact, uh, you when, might. <laughs> when I lived up in Peshigo, yeah. Peshigo River from the Bay of Green, any river that's an outlet inlet from the Bay of O'Connell River, all those just get tons of walleye spawning up there. And before school, I'd drive in the morning and there would be, you know, hundreds of people lined up shoulder to shoulder. And people would always ask, did you fish the walleye run? I was like, nope, not once. Why not? I was like, that's not my idea of fishing. Like, I, I like to go to relax, <laughs> not to deal with that kind of stress. So I just didn't do that. But like, yeah. I can imagine. Boat ramps are a stressful place to begin with anyways. I can't back up a trailer to save my life. He's not like, lying. A lot, of, <laughs> a lot of like stress for me. And then others are getting frustrated. <laughs> this freaking guy. I'm like, how long is it going to take, buddy? Hey, you can, I, I have, uh, let me tell you how much, you know, I have no problem at all. I have no shame. You can get in my truck and drive it for me. <laughs> do a better job. I'm not being an ass when I say you do it. Like literally you can do it and maybe we'll all have a better day. Uh, I don't want to get into like two mega specific situations, but talking about like sharing the resource, one thing that I've always heard come up is, and I guess it doesn't matter if it's from, it's a deer was shot on public or private, but when they cross onto another property owner and property owners don't allow permission, mm-hmm. how does that whole scenario work? Cause I've heard of that. And like, you can't, the, the wardens I've heard can't even do anything. Like the person has to grant you access do you guys run into that situation? Do you get calls on that? Or is is that a, a pretty common one or is that a pretty isolated event? <clears throat> Eric's looking at Brad, I think. Bradley, Go ahead, Bradley's Eric. nodding his head. You got it, buddy. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, unfortunately, you got it, bud. That, that is not a, a scenario where we are always able to provide the assistance that the hunter um, may, may want. Um, we don't have the authority to, to, to tell, you know, to to make that property owner have to let, you know, yep. let you on. Um, That's what property owners love is when they tell them what they can and can't do. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Everyone loves, loves yeah. being told what they can, can and cannot do on their own land. Um, you know, one thing I would encourage is, you know, as a, as a responsible hunter, um, you know, know where you're going to be hunting. Um, you know, if it is a smaller property where you may have issues with, you know, a deer running across your property or something along those lines, Try and go meet your neighbors ahead of time. Let them know what you're going to be up to. Let them know where you're going to be at um, and ask them, hey, 
if this situation does occur, um, can I call you? You know, do I do I need to call you or is, is it OK for me to go on over? But I think a lot of, um, you know, when there's that opportunity to to plan ahead of time, I think that's the best way to avoid those circumstances. Granted, I know, you, you know, you can't plan for everything. You know, sometimes, you know, you, you hit a deer poorly and it runs a mile, you know. And, yeah, right. I don't know that person. But, but you know, <laughs> yeah. it, the, the, the more you can do ahead of time to make those relationships ahead of time, I think that's going to help people avoid that situation. Well, I'm, I'm no conservation warden, but I'll, my advice is get it in writing. Text message. You yeah. Know, when I asked for permission to hunt where I got this guy, it was all via text. That wasn't. It was a bit intentional because it's like, hey, can you hunt this property? Hey, this is the property owner. This is his phone number. This is his name. He said, yes, you can hunt it on these days. You know, this is the day I'm here. And I think, you know, if someone were to like go, oh, I, yeah, you can hunt it. Oh, I, I forgot I had that conversation. I don't remember the day. Like that could get a little fuzzy. I think there's like from the permission standpoint of all the folks that are knocking on doors now because of the GIS mapping, Spartan Forge, Onyx, so forth, like. I don't know if that's a legal thing. If you have to get in writing, some states require you to. I just think it's a good idea regardless. Um, I don't know what our stance is on it here in Wisconsin, but. Yeah. Um, I, go ahead, Brad. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So Wisconsin, you don't need written written consent. Um, but it, like you said, it is always a, a great idea to have it. I myself, I, I text the landowner every time I go hunting um, and just, to let her know and, and let them know um because i want to respect their property just because that's what we do as hunters and and fisher uh fishermen is we respect the outdoors we respect other people's property so we don't want to lose we don't want to lose that right so um it's definitely a good idea to in writing legally do you need it no <clears throat> that preemptive approach is Gotta always be best though, because if you can make a positive first interaction, you're a step ahead. And if it's before season, I feel like that makes a big difference. Because in the middle of you shoot a buck on <laughs> November 5th and you're asking to go tramp through somebody's property when they're likely out hunting or someone they care about or related to is out hunting, it's a lot harder to get a yes than if you had met them and shown you're a good person four months earlier. And then they said, Oh, yeah, I'll go with you real quick. And I, I just see that being a lot more successful all Food the way around. Too. Like you could always Yeah. Here's a gift card to your favorite restaurant. Here's a meal that I like to cook. Here's some beer. Like peace offerings are also, they go a long way. You know, definitely not a, a half, must have, but uh, Greg and I hunt that farm that he's got access to. And we have delivered a couple of 30 packs there over the years. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he knows them well anyways, but it's like, you know, you didn't have to do that. No, we didn't, but you didn't have to let us hunt here either. Yep. And it's something that we don't want to take for granted. Um, we, on the podcast last week, we ended the show or towards the end of the show, someone had commented in, uh, on live broadcast about an interesting tactic I had never considered. I thought it was a very fascinating idea, but I was <laughs> the like, turkey? yeah, think... using, using deer decoys during turkey honey or hunting or vice versa, using turkey decoys during deer hunting season. I know turkeys are in season in the fall, so maybe that can work. But the whole concept was they made the other speed, this target species more comfortable in their experience. And then we had posted about that clip. And I think on TikTok, it went close to 60,000 views. And you can imagine the comments. And <laughs> most people were like, yeah, I do that. It's amazing. <laughs> and others like, hey, yeah, I don't know if you can legally do that because that's not the target species. And you have to be careful. Kind of like you can't fish for this species. You can't target the species of fish if it's not in season, mm. even if you're. So I don't know if you guys <laughs> have like, have you heard of that? Is that a thing? Like, since you're here, hey, a pretty Warden, weird one. <laughs> let me uh, ask you a question real quick. What are your <laughs> thoughts on this? And if you don't have the right answer, you don't have to answer. You could say I'll get back to you. Uh, that That's a new one for me. I don't know if Brad's <laughs> gotten that call before, but I, I have not gotten that call. I I have not gotten that call. Um but I guess what, what comes into my mind is what else are they carrying? Um, there's a lot when it comes to uh, involved in hunting, obviously, if they're hunting turkey. Obviously, if they have a rifle round with a, with a deer oh, decoy, a then, okay. <laughs> then we have, then we have different no issues. But if they're out there with, with TSS shot with a, with a 410, then we, uh, then we have a different ball game, right? So um, I've, 
never heard that question, but um, I have heard of the, people... the rules are, and then get right up to that line. <laughs> see. If you guys are driving yeah. around the next uh, few weeks during turkey season, you see like eight deer decoys. You know those well, idiots I've also, to the OKS on her podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've also heard of guys using uh, dough bleak cans when they're walking in at night uh, or early in the morning, excuse me, for turkey hunting if they're sneaking into a roost because fawns are are natural, naturally loud uh, little yeah. creatures. Yeah. yeah. So they'll use a doe bleed. I've heard that. So I've definitely um, used turkey calls walking in the deer woods yeah, to cover my own. Cover your, but yep, like, yeah, that's yeah. a good, the, the fawn call. That's, that's a great idea too. Look at these ideas. We're all these cross around 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 be, beaver calls. What? <laughs> <Whatever> <laughs> I mean, beaver call. Well, I joked. I was like, I want to make a whole nativity scene. Let's get some goose out there. <laughs> like, you know, let's make it like a, a nature party. The deer I, don't know what's going on. I here. have a buddy that I went to college with who's sending me pictures about his turkey hunt and the, they're very flocked up right now. So he's got all these like six toms that keep coming into the field he's hunting. He's hunting, I think, with his recurve. So he's trying to get him close. Can't get him within 60. And he sends me a picture like yesterday morning or whatever. And he's like, hey, they're, they're all back out again, but they still won't come in. And I look at the foreground of the picture and outside his blind, he's got about eight turkey decoys. And I said, oh, you put the whole spread out. And he's like, well, they got a fox. So do I. <laughs> he said he borrowed them from his neighbors, whoever he could get them from. Good idea. Pretty great. Well, that, didn't that work. yeah, good work. I don't need to go over there. They already got all flock. That's too intimidating. It's like going to a networking party. I'm, yeah, there's a lot of people in that corner. Like they probably all know each other. I'm not gonna disrupt that party. Um, do you get a lot from folks you come in contact with? Do you get a lot of like people being upset with policy? Like you guys are there to enforce it, right? And make sure everybody's safe. Do you get people complaining a lot about like, oh, that was a stupid rule, it wasn't like this, and like thinking that you're in charge of like, do you know what I mean? Is that, is that a, I would imagine you get just a lot of the rules. I don't make them. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not uncommon for somebody to disagree with a, a law, you know, and you know, it's something where, you know, everyone sees that, you know, probably when it comes to you know driving a car, you know, yeah. you know, why is the speed limit 35 here and not, you know, so I mean, it's, I think that's, that's a universal thing that, that occurs throughout um, you know, oftentimes people, um, you know, look at us and obviously, you know, being in uniform and being in a position of authority, um, you know, it, we, we are, uh, and, and directly in front of them, you know, it's easy to, to have us be somebody that, you know, they want to vent to. Um, and I'm entirely open to, <laughs> to listening to some of those things, as long as it's, you know, somewhat reasonable stay, and, stay and calm. yeah, exactly. You know, Again, it's yeah. like talking to my kids, just stay calm. <laughs> yeah. You know, if, if somebody's just sitting there swearing at me, you know, we'll probably end that conversation rather quickly, but at the, the same time, you know, people, uh, also, you know, a lot of that stems from, from being passionate about that's a good point you know yep. being out there and and enjoying those different resources um and having you know strong belief on on how that that should be uh done to ensure their you know enjoyment um and you know if if there is that ability to have you know that that back and forth um you know oftentimes you know we can try and explain you know maybe why a certain regulation or, or law is in place and you know Sometimes, you know, people, it doesn't matter what you say, they, they aren't going to um, necessarily agree or disagree. But, um, you know, if, if you can kind of get get a little bit of, of you know, maybe that why um, out there, uh, you know, sometimes that can that can help uh, temper that passion or, you know, that understanding of, right. of, of yeah, how things go. And the great thing also about the state of Wisconsin is, um, you know, there is a citizen um ability for for people to to you know comment and you know propose different uh you know regulations and and changes and um you know that's that's a, another avenue to be able to steer people towards if they uh you know are very passionate about a certain area i think we just shared that out in the last couple of weeks the spring questionnaire yeah. and go to your spring yep. hearings for your different zones and uh deer council yeah, yeah, committees there's, yep one of the I know we're getting towards the top of the hour here. We're at it, but I know we had a semi late start because of tech stuff. Um, but I did want to hear some more stories from you guys. You know, I don't know what kind of juicy stuff you guys got on the bone that you're willing to share on a, on a live podcast. Um, but 
I know that was one of the things in the in the bullet points here that I was like, well, this is something I'm really looking forward to hearing. Maybe it's not that juicy, and I'm overselling it, but um, Brad, the the tenured the, the tenured warden <laughs> on the call, the con- conservation officer, what do you got to share on that subject? Well, what do you what stories do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's like you talk to uh, anytime there's a cop at a party, you're like, all right, let's hear the stories. And they're like, well, I can't tell you these ones because it's too much. So let's I can I can tell you one of my favorite. I'll tell you one of my uh, favorite cases that I worked with in Wisconsin. We were we were running a decoy, and uh, and I was working with a newer officer at the time, and uh, we were uh, sitting on one of our our shining fields with a decoy, and we actually saw a vehicle come down. It was past the shining hours, and they started shining the vehicles and. Uh, we did have a, we had a ton of shining complaints. We've had at, at this location, we had a ton of shining complaints, uh, illegal shining complaints that is. And then we also had um, some dead deer carcasses as well with uh, heads cut off. So um, w- we worked the complaint and uh, the newer officer was, saw the uh, individual shine the field right away and was gung ho about getting out there and getting them. And, we just, uh, me and the other officers, there, there were four of us there. We just kind of calmed that guy down and said, just wait, let's, let's, let's let this draw out. And as soon as I said, let's just wait, we saw uh, a knocked arrow go flying and stick right into our decoy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, door. yeah, wow. we, uh, was it a buck decoy? Got... Sorry to interrupt. Was it an what antler was decoy? Was it an antler, like a buck decoy? No. It was actually a coyote decoy. Really? That we had out. Yeah, it was something something a little different. So, um, yeah, we had a couple violations there and uh, um, made made a good deer case out of it as well. So, that was a one that was one of my favorite stories in Wisconsin. So, oh, that's interesting because you can predator hunt at night, but you uh, can't. Shine. So that's where it gets. That's yeah. where people can get confused if you're actually archery hunting. Uh, coyotes in the evening during the during the deer season you actually if you're using a bow or a crossbow you have to follow shooting hours okay if you're using a rifle you don't have to follow shooting hours i did not know that so i've never shined with a bow but like (laughs) that's interesting um that actually can i ask a real quick question i told my mom that we were talking to you guys and she's really into the outdoors and she had a question um, I don't think either of you have bears in your county, but up at the cabin where my parents are at, we do some bear hunting. If you shot a bear and tracked it at night and had a sidearm and that bear was wounded, but like immobile, can you legally finish the bear or do you have to wait till morning or how does that work at night? You know, you've got a light, you've got like a sidearm. Is it illegal to dispatch that bear or is it legal? To- what a gray. I don't know how my mom came up with that. She's like, I got a question. <laughs> Ask this. <laughs> Yeah, you you would not be able to to dispatch that bear. You'd have to wait till morning. Yeah, you'd have to wait till it was legal shooting hours. Okay. Legal or, shooting or hours. Could, like yeah, when's it when's too late to call a, a warden? Um, because you'd be like if you felt bad it was suffering, could you be like, hey, this is a situation. Can you come out? Because if I hit it with my car and a police officer showed up, they'd kill it. That's my logic, anyways. Yeah, but, no, I I understand that. Um, you know, overall, um. Before you're going to make a decision like that, I, I would, yeah, I would, I would contact, try and, you know, get a hold of somebody. Um, you know, it's never necessarily too late. Um, I would say if it's, you know, you're calling a warden, I would use good discretion. You know, if you're, um, if it's something a little lower level, um, you know, trying to, you know, don't, don't call me. Yeah. yeah. You don't need to be calling me at 2 a.m. If it's a question, um, <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty. I, I wouldn't want to be tracking <laughs> a bear at night. Let's just start there. Like to your mom she's batshit crazy <laughs> like she's a you've met a, us <laughs> yeah i mean and you're she's a nice lady i'm not I, I know this is public and she's listening i don't mean it that negatively i just mean like she's a badass and she's trying to track a bear in the middle of the night like no thanks i will wait till morning just so i can you know not be scared pooping my pants and having a different problem like yeah and and you know maybe that's something that would come up in that conversation of yeah do you really need to be doing this right now um so um, Good question. Yeah, uh, bear opens early. No, it and, can and be warm out. You know I, what I'm saying? Like, yeah, oh yeah, and you say that we we, we don't have to deal with you know bears, but I did it's have to. Feasible I, in my mind. It is. 
I, I did get a call from our my local sheriff's department about a bear getting hit on uh, I forty three in Hell's Corners. Really, Hell's Corners, and shit, wow. having to go out there Wait, and Windmill Park over there. Yeah, and, and collect a, a bear off the the side of uh, the freeway uh, during rush hour traffic on like a Speed Tuesday. You don't see that hit, hit bears. No, no, <laughs> and, and I'm sure Brad's had one wander through his county on occasion. There was one here in uh, Dowson slash Oconomowoc uh, this last season. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe it was more than one. I don't know, but I know the adolescent ones will cover some ground. But I had, um, oh, I had a story that I was going to share that was similar to that. Where, oh, Shining, yeah, to your point, Brad. I, I when I was in college, I was doing a, a report, or like I, I was in school to be a graphic designer and uh, a media degree, a web media degree. So we Imagine had to do, that. yeah, we had to do videography, <laughs> videography course, and. So we had to really like do a storyboard, a, a, a narrative, a whole thing. And so I, of course, picked hunting and I did this. It's on YouTube right now. It's very cheesy. Um, but it was like, you got to get into hunting. And one of the things you do, you can go shine for deer to you know, like pattern their behaviors and see if they're on. So I'm, I'm with my now wife. We were dating at the time. And I'm in this. This is field. how you want Holly over taking her shining. Oh, yeah. Nice. Hey, I got to do this homework assignment. I have to go shine for deer. I'm not kidding. Like, you got to film it. <laughs> and, and, uh, we pull up on, on 164 in Pewaukee. There's always deer in this field, so I'm like, this will be an easy thing. And I'm shining, and I'm not seeing much. And then a cop pulls up behind me, turns lights on. I'm like, why? <laughs> I'm like, I get in trouble for the dumbest shit. You know, like, damn it. I'm like, I wonder if I broke a law. Like, I don't. So then, of course, I go into full-on panic mode out the gate. And he comes to the car. I'm like, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't know. You know, he's like, I was just seeing what you're up to. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm shining. For, I got this paper. I, you know, not paper. The homework assignment. I got to make this video. He's like. I know a real good spot. Why don't you follow me? <laughs> and so then he he led us to this like secret road by a water tower in Pewaukee on like private land. He's like, well, this is public access. You can park here and shine. There's always big bucks and deer. And I was like, I just got a private escort to this spot to shine for big bucks. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, and so that where I was shining in the video, that was the spot. And it was beautiful. That's cool. And so I was like, went from like, you know, complete panic without even knowing what had happened because of course i'm just panicking out the gate uh to like oh great i'm gonna get my girlfriend arrested with me for, <laughs> for sure my homework assignment i'm like this cop's not gonna believe me that's, that's what i'm doing but i'm like i can show you the assignment if you need uh anyway so and yeah i don't know if you got any eric any other uh war stories of like the decoy one's interesting with the coyote that's uh you see a lot of those on like the northwoods law and all that yeah get out of the car now you know they're like you got a lot going on here with the the uniform. Like at what point do like do you have deadly force capabilities? Or yeah, like yeah, um, yeah. We are we are uh, fully sworn law enforcement officers within the the state of Wisconsin. Um, so yeah, we we carry a, a duty weapon, um, taser, uh, handcuffs, all those different things. Um, you know, we have the the ability to encounter um, you know. The, the same things that any other law enforcement officer um, may encounter and uh, you know, similar, like, like in our wreck vehicle world, you know, ATVs, boats and uh, snowmobiles, you know, we're very concerned with safety there. So one of the big things that we probably are very dangerous vehicles, like they're not yeah. as safe as your Toyota Camry. So, yeah. you know, we prioritize, you know, OWI enforcement on those things and, and making sure people are operating safely um, and, you know, anytime you're, you're dealing with um, extremely intoxicated people, um, you know, things can Usually easily boating probably right can. Yeah. I mean, boating is boating is definitely a one area. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, in, in general, in the rec vehicle world, that's um, it, that it happens. Um, and it's yeah important that, you know, we are uh, able to handle any situations that may may occur there. Um, you know, similarly, when it comes to encountering, you know, hunters and everyone else. Um, you know, people can get, you know, very passionate about doing those things. And sometimes there can be some heated, you know, conflict that, that occurs. Um, and especially when you have people that are armed, um, you know, it's important that we're able to, yeah, um, you know, protect ourselves and protect the public. Yeah. Still waiting for a story, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess, <laughs> you know, an example of that, um, you know, working in Milwaukee, um, we we get tasked with a lot of different special events um so mm -hmm. not uncommon for us to you know provide our expertise um on the water um you know for things you know like when the milwaukee bucks had their playoff uh run you know we had wardens uh, on the water 
um, and, you know, pulling people out of the water that were jumping into the water in downtown Milwaukee. Oh, um, you know, there also were um, a couple different instances where we had armed subjects, um, you, know, and, you know, potentially intending to do harm or, you know, we've had to respond to those those circumstances. Um, do you and, ever have any where it's like animal on like a animal on the loose that shouldn't be? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess one of the more memorable ones for or? me is um, in West Dallas. Um, we had a deer that bashed through a uh, screen door and went into the second floor of a uh, <laughs> residence. Oh, no. House. That's bad news. Yeah. So I got a call from the West Dallas um, dispatch saying that they had their uh, officers all tied up with something else. And, <laughs> yeah, hey, we you... need a natural resource officer. Yeah, we, we need a natural resource <laughs> no, officer to right. help Pronto. get this, this deer out of this house. It's like a scene out of Super Troopers. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. And yeah, we I climbed on the roof of the garage and was looking into one of the bedroom windows, and there was a little basket rack, a pointer. It's confused as confused as can be i think he had clothing women's underwear on his antlers and uh blood Full ripping rush. out of his <laughs> this one's uh, too small. dripping this out one's of his too hand big. and uh eventually um myself and a couple other wardens we were able to one was able to sneak up the stairs i think i climbed through a bathroom window and it's traumatic uh, for the homeowner there's blood in their house like that's it was a, a mess scene. in the house yeah, traumatic it was for it was an absolute mess in the house like... and eventually we were able to um kind of tunnel this animal and had somebody come in from behind and basically um bump it and uh blocked off so it couldn't go down the hallway so it only had the only option was to go down the stairs and it uh yeah kind of charged out of the bedroom um hit hit the other wall that we had to to block it and ran back down the stairs out the screen door that was broken open and wow. uh back into back into Whittle Park or wherever ring, your ring doorbell you wind bumped it through the saddle <laughs> yeah I, 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 exactly exactly that that was That's definitely wild. one of the better uh deer drives I've been a part of so the deer was okay yeah the, 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 the house was a mess though oh I can't imagine um between broken glass TVs. broken furniture yeah. Um, and it was a very sweet older couple oh. that. Um, Why did their insurance policy cover were that? Were they one? okay? I, they, 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 they were okay. I think uh, the, the husband, if I remember correctly, um, stood fast in the, in the kitchen and uh, was, was there to protect the house. And we had to do our best to, to get him to a safer situation. Um, wow. Just, yeah, due to how powerful those animals can be. Oh, especially in close quarters where they're not sure what the hell's going on. Yeah. 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 hundred percent scared. They don't even know what the hell's going on. Yeah. What scent brought me into this place? <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Yikes. We got turkeys coming into roost or right across the street. Here yeah. The, oh, old abandoned golf course. We got deer and turkey coming through. I saw a woodchuck the other day coming into the yard. We got bird feeders out. Like, yeah, there was a, and we, we'll, this is a lot of selfish, selfish questions, guys. Cause you're here. I forget. I talked about this last week too. I think was, um, I forget which rule or regulation was, but you can hunt your own personal private property, I thought or think, and I could probably go find the regulation on it, but I forget the parameters. It has to be within a certain range of the of the dwelling or something like that. Yeah, one thing I would caution so on like, that is is um there's a difference between the state law and municipal ordinances. <laughs> Figure like township building. Yeah. So <laughs> Eric, don't shoot a deer in your backyard. Do it. <laughs> ensure that. that yeah, yeah. Yeah. So make sure that, you know, if you are in, you know, maybe a potentially more urban area or something along those lines, um, that not only are you following state laws, but that you are also following whatever municipal ordinances they may have regarding whatever, you know, type of weapons you yep. can discharge. Um, I know there's some some different unique and you know, kind of different things that uh, come into play there. So just caution that. They're all that. different too. Like where Matt Very is much. up by him, like you have to go to the police department and yeah, get certain permits from them. I think you just them. buy it. Like I don't think you have yeah. to apply for it, but you, you pay 20 bucks and you get like a discharge permit to shoot your crossbow or your, mm. your bow and arrow. Yeah. Within whatever municipality. Yeah, if you're in municipality Mequon or something. Yeah. yeah, I think that is Mequon yeah. is where Matt's at. So I remember him telling me, hey, make sure if you go to that public spot. Oh yeah. So. It's good to know having some of that local tribal knowledge. Um, the other... What's the other 
Oh God, my brain is just not remembering what I want to remember tonight. It doesn't matter. Good point. Well made. Uh, also, good point. Well made. I don't know what I was going to say something in relation to that. And now I don't remember what it was. But uh, oh, I do remember. It's Lee Ellis with uh, Seek One. Huge social following. Um, urban hunting. They kind of like were the ones that kind of like illuminated that as a thing. And he had told a story on the show. Oh, two years ago or something about they're hunting urban areas, small tracks. And he's like, we tracked a buck through several yards. Obviously I had to go get permission, permission, permission. But like there had been a likely some sort of college party uh, the night before. And so we had tracked a deer and literally the blood trail like went over a sleeping human body that was passed out in the backyard with, you know, awesome. a bunch of red soul cups. So this dude had like deer blood all over him and didn't even know it. Awesome. And I don't know if it was their that story or a different one, but one of their deer like died in a, in a swimming pool. He said, and it yeah, was like the their whole on pool that. was full of blood. Yeah, it's like a scene out of uh, the it's... horse in the pool. It's that the yeah the gangster movie. I can't think of anything right now, but uh, because my brain is shutting down on me, it might be a good time to bring the planet for landing. Can you just share the the resources? Like, I don't, I think I may have interrupted somewhere along the way when I was like, how do people get a hold of you? Like, how do I get a hold of a warden? Do I have to channel through the the main customer service number? So uh, the the best recommendation, and I guess it, it depends a little sure, bit on, right? on the circumstance. Yep. So if you are out in the field and you observe a violation, you know, you're, you're driving back home at night and you know it's after 10 p.m and you see somebody uh you know shoot a deer from the road or something along those lines um and you're trying to you know report a a, a, a dnr violation um the best resource is to call our dnr tip line our violation hotline yeah. which is 1-800-TIP-DNR or tip w dnr Something like something. I, I have I have the number if you want me to give it. Yeah, eight four seven. Uh, something something. something Ninety three sixty seven one eight hundred eight four seven ninety three sixty seven. So that that's the number one um, way that we encourage people to call in if they are seeing a violation and want to report that into the the DNR or warden. Um, best reasons for doing that versus calling a warden specifically. Um, while wardens are often available at all hours, um, you know, we do have lives. Yeah. Families. Families. You know, we, 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 we may be on vacation. We may be, you know, have to have childcare responsibilities, yeah. whatever it is. Um, so we may be in military barracks. Yeah. You may be <laughs> in military <laughs> barracks. Um, so that calling that, DNR tip line. Um, what that does is we have some some staff that is then able to send that out to who is the the nearest warden um, that is that is on duty or are able to respond depending on you know what type of violation it is. Um, but people can contact us directly. Um, again, uh, steer people to that DNR website. Yeah, you don't have to give out the other number if you <laughs> like. You don't have to. Well, <laughs> but I, our you, numbers you are could. are publicly accessible yeah. um, on the DNR's website. If, There's the yep. staff directly. The I was gonna. I, yep. I think I've looked it up before when I was up in Fisher. There was a gentleman I'd run into a number of times, and I I used to like contact him if i had any specific questions he was yeah. always very friendly oh, and good to, good to reach out yeah God, leave me alone i don't know where the musky here but <laughs> you can you can search by county you can search for warden in that particular county um or a lot of us during field contacts um you know we we recognize cards. yeah we recognize who's out there um who can be an extra set of eyes for us um, who's a good resource, um, or just in general, if anybody asks, like, hey, you know, how can I get a hold of you? Um, we're yeah, happy to share a business card, happy to share our phone numbers um, normally, and uh, yeah, be a resource for people. Awesome, great. Well, I appreciate you guys taking. I mean, you're on you're on the clock here, but thanks for for being on the show. This is a unique one for us. And awesome. You guys are welcome back anytime. I think it, it might actually be really interesting to have you guys on before deer season starts to go over any updated rules, regulations, um, and we could get some field, some calls and so forth. Uh, Brad, did you have any Love other? Yeah, thank you very much. And um, good luck with the, the active duty deployment and all that stuff. 
Yeah, and thank you guys for giving up your seasons to help the people of Wisconsin. You know what I mean? Like, because that's one of the things you love to hunt and fish. Well, now you're, you know, those are your busy seasons. Well, well, one thing I I will say that that may be a a myth. Um, that's another myth. So, so it it does not by any means mean that that we we don't get to (laughs) get to hunt or fish. Also, um, you know, our department is um doing a great job at trying to. Um, you know, ensure that we have a, a good work-life balance. Um, so, you know, one of the things that makes us passionate about hunting and fishing is engaging in hunting and fishing. So, you know, we, we are encouraged, you know, to, to, you know, still get out there, engage in those activities. You know, we may not be doing it on a typical Saturday, Sunday, but sometimes being able to get out on a Wednesday or it's Thursday, it's less crowded. not, not quite as crowded. Can't wear your uniform. Yeah. That would be cheating. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> You know, it, yeah, we we still have the ability to to get out and about and enjoy all those different recreational opportunities. Well, that's a great little little nod in there for the recruitment too. If you're thinking about it, or if that's a field or a yeah, job, it, potentially you're thinking about it, you're not going to give up all of your. Time no, it, it is not a death sentence to your ability to still get out and <laughs> and and engage in those activities yourself. Yeah, that's great. Good call. Correct. Well, thanks a lot, gentlemen. I'm going to end the live broadcast and. Uh, Brad, if you want to hang on for just a second, we'll do a quick, quick debrief and then let you guys go on uh, with the rest of your day. So everybody that tuned in, thank you very much for tuning in. A uh, reminder, check out our partners, Nosler, Latitude, Spartan Forge, Rack Hub. I end it with that because I normally don't and uh, want to make sure we give those guys the support for supporting us and helping pay for all the stuff that keeps this thing going because there's a lot of technology in the room. <laughs> Albeit breaking all we, the stuff. We wreck a lot of stuff. <laughs> we, we push it to the limit. You know, we really do. <laughs> So, no, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next week. I, I don't know if we have a guest or not. What do we have? I'll just take a, a quick, quick peek. We have, uh, no, yeah, no guest next week. What's the date today? It's the 23rd. 24th. 23rd. 23rd. Yeah. My phone on me, so <clears throat> it's hard for me to see a calendar here. But, yeah, the next guest we do have is, uh, oh, no, wait, do we have a, Tuesday, May 7th is, uh, this might be your, is this your buddy, Derek? Nicholas? Yeah, from Colorado. Okay, so that's your, and then, okay, and then Maddie with Nosler is the 11th. So it sounds like tequila with your buddy is going to be in order then. Sounds good. So hopefully you're actually in studio for that one. We'll see. And uh, yeah, with that, we'll let everybody go, but thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you soon. Have a good night.